Hey, man, Dallas. Keith Schilling from Sure Dog. How you doing, man? Good. How are you doing, Keith? Um, excellent. Thanks for asking. Uh, my first question is your last fight was a no contest against Sayyid Awad. Uh, was he offered to you in, in a fight? No, that fight never came back. But uh, I know there was a bit of talk about it in the week following that fight. But I don't know. The, the buzz kind of died down, and it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. You don't know, you don't know really what happened with that? No, I guess, like, scheduling and whatever just didn't work out. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, you were originally supposed to face Keone. Now you're facing Ricardo. Uh, what was the biggest change in opponent? Like anything you had to prepare differently? Yeah, you know, like one guy was a lefty, one guy's a righty. So there's a big difference there. But outside of that, you know, training for a fight is training for a fight. You got to, you know, spar, condition, roll. It's all pretty much the same. Uh, my last question to you. I, I, I watched your last interview after your last fight. You said you just want to make big improvements between fights. So that said, what is going to be the big improvements that we see? Uh, yeah, just an overall technical uh, level up. You know, treat, if you're treating your career or life like an RPG, let's just say, uh, you know, I got a bunch of experience and I'm leveled up. Max? Hi, I'm Max Morales from MMA Pit. And, you know, you, you in your own words, you said that that fight before Sawad's fight, so, so something uh, crazy happened now in this Sawad's fight, that no contest. So are you looking forward to change that, that page on fight day or that or that page was changed at the first day of fight camp? Uh, no, I think what sticks out in people's minds is your most recent fight because people who watch fights don't don't see training so uh yeah of course i would like to remedy the that taste in people's mouth of me having weird fights matthew hey how's it going mandel this is matthew putterman from my mma news how you doing good how are you hey doing well man hey my first my first question i have for you is like why should we believe that you're the next big thing in mma today from mma reporters standpoint I mean, you don't have to <laughs> but, uh, just watch me fight, I guess. Like, it doesn't really matter. There's pro prospects that pl that uh, play out and then there's prospects that don't work out. So I, I guess I'm one of those guys that's still a question mark. Um, in my eyes, I believe in myself and that's all I really care about. So you don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> that's all I got for you, brother. Thank you. Jack? Hi, this is uh, Jack Juan from Knockdown News. Um, after your quick low blow fight, um, was it important to you to get back in the cage, um, you know, very quickly? Because you usually have that pace of, you know, one fight a year. The, <laughs> the one fight a year is not by design. It's, uh, it just ends up happening. But uh, so it wasn't necessarily the fact that the fight was so strange uh, that made me get back in here quicker. It just it worked out finally. Harry? Hey, Mandel, Harry Mack from the Bookies Basement. I hope all is well. I hope all is well with you as well, Harry. Thank you. So I just wanted to ask, on Tapology, your official nickname is listed as Rat Garbage. So I just wanted to know, where, where does that come from? Uh, it's a long story, but uh, it's my, the short story is it's my Instagram handle. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, thank you very much, Mandel. Best of luck. No problem. Thanks. James? I mean, no, this is James from Strictly MMA, and um, I know people keep bringing up your activity. It seems to be a constant thing at the press conferences, but this is the second time we're seeing you in just about six months. Is it safe to say 2021 could be the year of Mandel Nalo? This is the one. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, that's the plan, and uh, let's hope everything uh, keeps going well. Absolutely. And then your opponent, Ricardo. Um, he seems to have the ability to finish it, whether it's standing or it's on the ground. You also have the ability to finish it, whether it's standing or on the ground. But looking at him, watching his past fights and getting ready for him on the short notice, is there a particular uh, situation where you want to keep this fight? No, not really. I think uh, if you're a fighter, you kind of expect it to happen everywhere. Um, obviously, there's like a loose game plan. So... But, you know, it, it doesn't really matter where, where stuff. You just look out for what the other guy's good at and fight your fight. Nate? 
Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I would like to piggyback off of the rat garbage question. We haven't seen a post on the rat garbage Instagram since May of 2020. Have you still been creating artwork and when can we expect rat garbage's return? I have uh, been creating artwork. I just haven't been posting. It. I don't know why. Uh, the next, so yeah, uh, maybe I'll release an NFT or something. I've got some merch, but I don't sell it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm still making stuff. I'm just, I don't, I don't know why I stopped posting. I got bored or something. Thank you, sir. Donna? Hey, uh, Mandel, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm okay. Um, talk to me about the lack of fans and how that impacts your performance and and to, to keep it all within one the one question, do you think that Bellator should start now with the States opening up and you know with, with the bubble as secure as it is, maybe starting to let a few fans back? As far as the second part of the question, I don't really know. That's their business. Uh, and the first part of the question, it really, do, as far as the fight itself, doesn't matter at all. Um, but I'll say, like, post fight, having your friends there is pretty cool. So that, that's the one thing that it changes. How do you find uh, life in the, the bubble? It's boring. <laughs> but I don't know. It's not that bad. Thank you, man. Simon? Simon Romero behind the grind. Mr. Mandel, Mandel Nalo, how are you today, my friend? Good. Thank you, Simon. So I have two for you here. Um, I just want to know how impactful has Coach Faraz Zahabi been throughout your career? Yeah, huge impact. I mean, uh, as far as MMA coaches go, he's, he's the – I mean, coach and fighter, you need to have a good synergy – um, and as far as I'm concerned, we're a great fit together. And he's really kind of opened my eyes to the way you should think about fighting. And uh, yeah, he's a huge impact. Been with him forever. And my second question for you would be, I know he's a short notice replacement, but what is something you've seen in Ricardo's fights that uh, excites you for Friday night? Uh, just the fact that he's a, he's a guy that doesn't really like decisions. So he's a guy that's going to, try to make something happen, which is always fun. Chris. Hey, Mandel, uh, Canadian myself, Chris Mancuso, Tarps Off Sports. Um, being a Canadian, you know, uh, uh, most of the other people wouldn't understand this, but there's an added pressure that comes with being an athlete from Canada, because if you have a, even a small amount of success, everybody hops on the bandwagon and you become a global, uh, a national star. Uh, do you feel that pressure a bit more back home? Or are you settling into life over in the States? Uh, I still live in Canada. Um, so, but, uh, you know, I think I'm much too small to feel any kind of, uh, national athlete, tr uh, pressure right now. If I was Rory, you know, that's a question for Rory for me. Uh, <laughs> it's all the same. I'm just a guy. Thanks, buddy. Jonah. Uh, hey, Mando, how you doing? Uh, Jonah here from, uh, behind the grind. Howdy. Howdy. Uh, I just want to ask uh, how you, uh, your experience, uh, you know, even though you only have uh, eight fights on, on your professional career, um, you've been doing this for such a long time. How do you think that that plays a factor um, against a guy like Ricardo? Yeah, you know, time in like, I don't know, this, I don't know if that 10,000 hours thing is true or not. People shut around a lot, but experience pays off. Uh, and in MMA, there's that's no different. So I think it's a, uh, it's huge having time in with good guys. That's all for me. Thank you, Mando. No problem. Rick Sanchez. Hey, Mandel. This is from live from Redici. How are you doing, man? Good. How are you? Uh, I just want to talk about the fight about, <laughs> sorry about that. I just want to talk about the fight, the past fight. Did you receive any backlash or criticism from no. No, and from, from like left. fans or media or anything, yeah. No, I really didn't, but to you know, maybe I did, but I kind of go radio silent and stay away from all that stuff in the weeks following a fight. So maybe people were talking a bunch of trash about me, but I didn't hear it. And just the uh, just the second part like what you learn from live and learn from the past fight, that fight, I just uh, you know. 
learn to keep my knees up. <laughs> uh, it's hard to really say. It was so short and it was such a freak accident that, uh, you know, you, you just kind of learned that, uh, I learned kind of what I already knew. It reaffirmed what I already knew about fighting, which is anything can happen on the day. You just count your blessings if you're not injured and you can get back in there and do it again. Take a couple more here, Ronald. Thank you. This is Ronald Smith from Getting Real. Mandel, how you doing, brother? Good. How are you? Doing as well as I can. And for you, man, 2020 has been such a hard year for so many people, but also so eye-opening. So for yourself, what did you learn for you during every, everything that went down during that year? Uh, in 2020, still 2021 is also crazy. But uh, yeah, you just have to understand what what type of things you really value, right? Um, that was the main thing. I think everybody kind of came, came upon that same epiphany uh, in 2020 is just like, you, you, there are things that you can, you can let go and there are things you really value. And uh, it, it really kind of narrowed in on what, what actually keeps me going in life. I don't know if that's any good, I don't know. No, that's exactly what I want. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. And the last question I got for you, just what you said about what values for you and through yourself, through your career, when it's all said and done, what do you hope? What do you hope for yourself to look back on to say, I'm proud of what I've done in my life? Yeah, the ultimate goal is to be considered one of the best fighters uh, to have done it. Um, there's a lot of work to be done, but that, like, as far as a career goes, that's it. Uh, that would be the ultimate goal. Last question here. I've got uh, one question. Hi, Adrian Mesher from Slovak uh, Svet MMA. Actually, uh, last week, Slovak fighter Michal Manimokri told us that while he trade in uh, Canada, three star, that you were the fighter who made the biggest impression on him. He said that you have great uh, stri striking, also really, you think really well during sparrings. And also, also, you hit really hard and have a great eye. How do you feel when you hear those words from another professional fighter? Yeah, it's always nice to hear. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed the name of the guy you were saying. M Michal Mokri. Michal Mani Mokri. Mike, yeah. Yeah, so Mike is amazing. He was with us at TriStar for a good long time. I know he just fought. He had a, I think he lost a decision last yeah, week. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's always nice training, uh, having your training partners speak highly of you. And, uh, you know, the gym dynamic is very important. And so I'm glad that uh, he, he, he likes me. <laughs> I like him too. All right. Thank you very much for the time, Mandel. Good luck the rest of the week. Cool. Thank you very much, guys.